All right, so I'm going to open up and disassemble this Sony uh, model SVE-151D11L. Okay, uh, let me see if there's a different model number in here. Oops, I don't need that stuff. And it's a Sony VAIO E series, okay. They don't have the exact model number here. I don't see one. All right, so I'm going to put that there. What is all this paper? Okay. All right, so Sony VAIO E series. I guess that's what the SV is, SVE, and then, okay. So if this is like the other ones I worked on, it's most likely going to need a PH1 or a JIS, um, actually a PH0. Okay, so we're going to use a PH0 or JIS0 screwdriver. First thing we're going to do is remove the battery. So make sure it's in the unlock position, slide it back, and then slide this one up as well. While you're doing that, you can lift the battery up and out. Okay, the customer replaced this battery, they said multiple times, but I think this model's too old, so the battery's likely just not good. All right, oops, let me put this away. Okay, so we're gonna take all the screws out. So let's go along here. There's one up here. Oh, that's actually a PH1 or JAS1 screw. So these two in the corners here are PH1 or JAS1 screws. Um, it looks like there's a bunch of screws missing, so hopefully I'll still be able to remove it. Some of the screws also look like they got stripped, so we'll see what happens. All right, so I'll remove these screws. Okay. And you want to keep the screws in order because they can be different size, shapes, and lengths. Okay. And if you mix them up, you can cause damage to the computer. All right. So there's supposed to be three screws back here, but I only see two. Again, keep in mind that this is an old used computer. These are customer computers, they aren't mine. I don't own all these hundreds of thousands of computers that I'm working on. So keep that in mind. I don't own, I won't have these computers to show anything that I don't show right now, okay? So anyways, we're gonna unscrew all these parts. It feels like the plastic mounts in here are broken. So I'm gonna have to be extra careful because if I try and undo the screw to hard or put too much pressure it feels like it's pushing on the back of the computer all right so I don't know if these screws are different from what are actually on your computer so make sure um, if it looks different or if your screwdriver doesn't fit properly don't just follow blindly because again these are customer computers and I never know what they do to them all right I'm go ahead and remove the screws here here you go, so underneath you can see the RAM. Again, it looks like the customer did this because they are two different sticks of RAM, right? But you pull these two tabs to the side, the RAM will pop up like that. And this is two gigs PC3 12800S. The one underneath is, you wanna check yours to see what yours is because it can be different. This might be a four gig um, or eight gig. Four gig PC3 12800S, okay? So as long as you got 12800 uh, DDR3 12800S, you should be fine. <laughs> but um, yeah, I'm gonna clean off the dust from this thing. Okay, so you just wanna make sure you got PC3 12800S. The size, you can get whatever you want. You can get two eight gig sticks if you want, two four gig sticks if you want. It's best to have matching sticks though. So this one, they haven't mismatched and usually that's not ideal. Anyways, we're gonna take this screw out. Okay, after you remove that screw, we can remove the CD drive. I like to just run my thumbnail along this as I kind of pull on it and it pulls that out. It kind of causes the thing to wiggle as it pulls. If you pull straight out, sometimes this bracket or the bezel will just break off. But there you go, that's how you remove the CD or optical drive. You can also replace that with a hard drive caddy if you want to upgrade and put another hard drive instead of CD drive. All right, so now we're gonna remove all these screws. So there's so many, one, two, three, four, five, six, okay. I'm just going to put them all in a row. Again, you want to keep the screws in order because they can be different size, shapes, and lengths, and you don't want to mix them up or you can cause damage. So I just put them out on my desk in the layout that I'm removing them, and that helps me keep track of the screws, okay? I don't know why this screw doesn't want to come out. Okay. 
trying to keep the screws in order, sorry. All right. All right, as far as upgrading the hard drive and the RAM goes, this laptop is pretty easy to do. There's this cover here for the hard drive, just those two screws. All right, and then there's another screw under here that you'll have to remove. Again, keep all these screws in order because they can be different size, shapes, and lengths, and if you mix them up, you can damage your computer. All right, there we go. So once you remove all the screws holding the hard drive, you can grab this plastic tab and you can use that to pull it over. And then after you do that, you can lift this up. So you would transfer this bracket over to a new hard drive or SSD. Um, this is a two and a half inch SATA drive. So if you were to upgrade it to an SSD, just make sure it's a two and a half inch SATA drive and you should be fine. All right, let's remove the rest of these. Oh, my phone is running out of storage space, so I might have to pause the video and delete stuff real quick because there's no way I'm going to finish this in five more minutes. <laughs> All right, I'll be back. I'm going to delete stuff and then we'll, I'm going to stitch these two parts together. All right, I'll see you guys in a bit. All right, I'm back. So hopefully that cleared off enough space on my phone. All right, so let's see here. Now we got all those screws out. Let's flip this over and see if there's anything we need to remove from the top. We might have to actually remove the keyboard first. Let's see. So to do that, I'll use this, usually this thin pry tool here. And I'll go along the top and then I'll run it along. When I feel a bump, then I'll kind of wiggle the tool in there, just like that. And those bumps are usually where the clips are. So I'll go along, feel another bump there and wiggle it. And there you go. You see it pops up. There we go. All right. Once you do that, I kind of pull the middle up and push the sides down while I kind of help rotate it more. All right. Just like this. Here you can see the keyboard backlight cable. Let me zoom in. To disconnect, disconnect this, you just flip up that latch and then you can pull that out. Same thing with the keyboard cable, but there's some tape on top of it. So you want to peel that tape out of the way. All right. Same thing. Flip the latch up. And then you can pull the cable out just like that. All right, underneath here is pretty dusty and gross, so I'm going to clean that off. They said the laptop's been overheating and shutting itself off, so very likely it's because the fan is all dusty and then um, the heat sink radiator. Okay, so we're going to disconnect these cables here. All right, flip the latch up. Then we'll pull that cable out, and we'll pull this cable out. All right, so now we got everything disconnected. Let's see if we can pop the um, keyboard or the bottom part off. I don't remember if the top part comes off or the bottom. So anyways, we're going to go over here, and it looks like there's a seam right here. So that's where we're going to pop it out. I just used my fingernail in between. You can use plastic pry tools. And then what I do is I use my fingernails and push on the back as I kind of pull the in between the gap out. Okay, here you can see it's coming up. All right, we're going to go along to the side. Oh, what is that? Okay, and then it looks like this bottom half is actually what comes out. So we're going to undo the bottom clips here. Is that where it comes out? Hmm. Let's see. There's lots of broken plastics in this one, so. All right, let's see. I'm gonna pop this. Okay, so yeah. So the clips separate on the bottom piece, it looks like. Okay, so there we go. I just kind of lifted it up and it's coming out. Oops, we're too zoomed in. Let's zoom out some more. All right, so now we're kind of wiggling it and there we go. So it looks like we didn't have to remove the keyboard part, um, but now you can see it's all removed. All right, so I'm going to clean the dust out here. Okay, I just use a toothbrush. I'm actually going to pause the video, clean the dust out, and then I'll be back. All right, I'm just going to use a toothbrush, brush the dust to loosen it, and then use an air blower to blow all the dust out. Okay, I'll be back in a bit. All right, so we cleaned that all out. Okay, a lot of these like pieces of the frame are kind of like falling apart. So this laptop's really old and falling apart. All right. 
Anyways, we're going to try and take out this fan here. So we already went over the hard drive, the RAM. Um, this one, the processor is replaceable. But um, I don't know what you'll be able to upgrade it with because you're limited to the slot and the generation. So some people ask and then they try and replace with uh, random uh, CPUs. But uh, you can only go so far. And also keep in mind that the cooling is only designed to cool up to a certain point. So if you start getting more powerful processors and they run hotter, it can actually just overheat your computer. Anyways, this one's overheating. So we took out the three screws holding this fan in place. We're going to lift it up. Okay, so this fan can easily come out. I'm going to disconnect the fan connector here. And zoom in. Oops, I'm actually charging the battery. Let me turn that off. It's going to overheat my phone. Okay, so we're going to disconnect this cable. I just used two fingernails, and then I kind of just wiggle the connector, and it pops out like that. All right, let's unroute this fan cable here. Okay, so here we go. The fan comes out, and this grease looks kind of gross, so I'm going to redo the grease on the fan. All right, and in here it's pretty dusty, so I'm just going to get a toothbrush, clean it up. And use this portable air blower and blow that out. The fan vents look kind of okay. I'm going to blow it out anyways just to see. Okay, looks good. Alright, let's see inside. It is dusty, so I am going to try and clean that with the toothbrush. Okay. Um, I am going to be taking out the heat sink, so actually I'll take the whole heat sink out and then we'll do that. Okay, because this is really gross inside. Um, it looks like you probably want to use a PH1 or JS1 screwdriver to remove the heat sink. Yep. And then this one screw here, we're going to use the uh, PH0 or JS0. If your screws are different or you have extra screws, keep in mind that this laptop is old and I don't know what the previous customer did. But anyways, we removed one screw there. We're going to remove the four screws from here using the PH1 or JS1 screwdriver. Okay, so it looks like the screws actually stay in place, but you just undo them and they will release. Okay. So there's the thermal paste here. It looks like there's actually not really any thermal paste contacting here. So we're going to have to redo that paste. And again, this looks pretty gross, so I'm going to use a toothbrush and clean that out. And yeah. All right. Okay, so we got that. It's all cleaned up, all right? We're going to clean this out because that's gross too. This customer is not giving me much time. They're actually waiting outside, so I'm doing this somewhat quick. I was actually working on a bunch of other computers as well. But anyways, we're going to clean this out, all right? So you're going to want to use some rubbing alcohol, and then we're also going to need um, some paper towels and I also need to show how to repair the fan okay so I'm gonna get a piece of paper towel and we're just gonna wipe off the old thermal paste okay just clean it off like that all right Alright, so we'll just clean off that thermal paste. I'm going to clean off this. I'm going to hold it over the trash can so it doesn't fall everywhere. Okay, this paste is pretty hardened on there. Okay, so once we got most of the paste off, what we're going to do is we're going to get the paper towel again, another clean piece. All right, get some rubbing alcohol. All right, I'm using 91% and then use that to kind of clean this off, okay? If it doesn't come off completely, then it's okay. We're just trying to get it as clean as possible. All right, but if it won't come out, don't worry too much because the thermal paste will help pull the heat away. Okay, so we're just cleaning this. 
Hmm. That stuff won't come off. It looks like it's scraped on or something. It's kind of weird. I don't know what they used in here, but all right. We're going to clean this off as well. So that's like oxidation, so that's not going to really clean off. But uh, there you go. That's probably as good as it's going to be. Use the dry paper towel. I'll try using this pl plastic scraper tool. And not really anything's happening, so... Yep, we'll just leave it. All right, let's wipe it down one more time. Dry it off. Okay, so now we're going to get some um, thermal paste here. And for these, because it's like a long shape like this, I like to put the thing out kind of like a grain of rice. Okay, just like that. And you want to keep it mound like a mound. When you put the processor down, it will actually spread the thing evenly. So you don't have to worry about completely spreading it even by yourself. Okay, you just put it like a mound like that. Let me see if I can show a clearer close-up picture. So just like that, okay. And when you put the processor down on top, when you do the screws, it will flatten it out. All right, so I need to actually get this more centered over. All right, just like that. And you don't want to put too much. Otherwise, it will just all overflow out, and that can actually cause worse air, um, not airflow, but heat transfer, because the heat will get trapped on these sides. All right, so once you do that, we're going to put the heat sink back in place. Make sure to get everything lined up. Okay. Then what you want to do is start with screw number one. I twist it backwards until I hear it click, and then I go twice that way. And then same thing with number two. One, two, okay. Same thing, backwards, one, two. Number four, one, two. We're gonna put this one screw back that was holding this um, fan assembly in place. Okay. Just like this. All right, and then we're gonna go ahead, go back to one, one, two, back to two, one, two, back to three. One, two, back to four. One, two, back to one. One, two, two, one, two, three, one, two, four, one, two. And then make sure they're all completely tightened. All right. And that should apply even pressure all around to spread the thermal paste out flat. All right. Just like that. Okay, so now we're going to clean up the fan, so I'm going to set this aside for now. Okay, and then we're going to take the fan here, and I'm going to get a toothbrush and just brush the dust off. Okay, so I guess I can brush it into this trash can so you can kind of see. Alright, so get that. I'm also going to clean off the, um, I don't know what you would call that, the shaft of the fan. Alright. So all that grease would come off. There was some like white grease there. All right, and then just brush it like this. I apply some pressure so it doesn't spin freely and that way it can help clean the fan, okay? Just like that, we'll go to the other side, same thing. Letting it turn slowly. All right. So we've got most of the dust off. Clean off the shaft one more time. All right, then you're going to do the same. Clean off this one. Okay, get the dust off there. All right, so now what we're going to do, we're going to be putting new grease into this. Um, I don't know if it's a bearing or just a sleeve, but anyways... We're going to get a needle and we're going to use some motor oil. I just use synthetic motor oil. Um, this is just the stuff I use in my car. If you don't have oil, you can just pull the dipstick from your car. Um, if you don't have a car, then I don't know, you can ask a neighbor or something if you can have, borrow some oil from their car. Don't use random stuff. Don't use WD-40 or cooking oil. That can actually be bad for the thing. All right. Um, if you can find any like bearing or high speed oil, um, then that would be good. All right, so once you get the oil drop in there, put the fan on top, give it a spin. 
Alright, I'm going to use this air blower and spin it. Alright, after that, pull it back out. And then we're going to clean it. So here you can see how gross the other one was when I cleaned it out. So we're going to clean this off. Okay, and there's actually that white milky grease coming out. It's kind of gross. We're going to clean that off. If you can see this piece, it's like white and milky. So I don't know if they tried to do something and made it worse, but uh, clean that off. Okay, yeah, that's, I don't know what they put in there. They must have put some kind of grease in there that's, I don't know. Try and clean that out. Okay, we're going to add some more grease. Drop it in. Okay get a new piece of paper okay we're gonna put that in again spin it around pull it out oh man what did they put in there well hopefully that grease is okay spin it around I'll clean it off and then put one more drop in it should be good okay Try and get the paper in there and clean that up Spin it around one more time. Okay, now it's coming out pretty clean. Put one more drop. It's too much. All right. Just like that. Put the fan in. Spin it around. Let's see what the dust looks like. Okay, it's nice and clean. I don't see that milky stuff on it anymore, so it should be okay. All right, so now we're going to put the computer back together. Okay. That was an old laptop, so I don't know if this video is going to be helpful to anybody, but I guess we'll find out. I'm going to have to clean off the other components too because they also have dust on them. But anyways, get the fan. All right. So we have this. This bigger part goes here. There's a little notch there that holds it, and then it goes like that. Okay. Get the pH zero screw screwdriver again, and we'll tighten these screws in place. All right, just like this. Oops. All right, now we got all the screws in. I'm gonna route these cables back over. Okay, make sure they go under. And then over here and then route it around okay and plug this thing back in just like that okay there we go we got the fans all cleaned up now we're going to put the bottom cover back on hopefully you got it all cleaned up too all right flip this over oops let's zoom back out Zoom out. Okay. Hopefully you didn't touch anything else. If you're wondering, there's a DC or charge port connector here, LCD, LVDS connector here. There's a grounding pin here. You got this connector for, I don't know what that's for actually. I think it's for speakers. Are the speakers in the screen of this laptop? Huh. Oh, it's in the top area. Okay. This looks like a speaker connector. Oh, I guess these these small things are the speakers here maybe okay so I think that's the speaker wireless card the antennas you just pull up by the tail you take the one screw out the card will come up like the RAM and you just pull it out the CPU again is replaceable you just use a flathead screwdriver to twist this over so right now it's in the lock position twisted down here and then if you twist it the other way it unlocks it and then you can actually pull the chip up but anyways then you got the CMOS or the BIOS battery here and you got these three USB ports um, with this cable in place, all right? And then you got also this cable for, is that the power button, I believe? Yeah, the power button and all those other little buttons there. Okay, so that's pretty much all there is. Now we're going to put it back together. Just put the cover back down, snap it back in place. All right, if you want, you can actually put back the hinge screws first because 
if you open and close this without the hinge screws, it can be a little bit risky. So I'm going to get the hinge screws first and put those corners in. Right, these actually you can add some red thread locker to help hold it in place better. Okay, but you want to be careful and put only a tiny bit. I was told that this stuff can eat through plastic, but I haven't had that issue. But just put a very little bit, not even a drop. I don't know if you can even see how much, but that, just a tiny bit like that. Get the screw in and tighten it down. Alright. Alright, make sure it's tightened all the way in. Grab the other screw, same thing, get a tiny bit of thread locker on there. Alright, and then we'll tighten that down as well. There we go. Okay, so now what we're going to do, like before, let's flip it over. And then we're going to put back the keyboard and those other cables. We actually didn't need to remove these to get to the inside to clean out the fan. But, well, I guess I did show like other um, repairs if you do need. Alright, so we're going to plug this back in. And this cable goes to these buttons here. Then you got this little cable. I believe this is for the trackpad itself. All right, get that cable in, line it up, put the latch back down. All right, then we'll get the keyboard with the keyboard backlight connector as well. So keyboard backlight connector here. All right, plug that in. All right, once you got that in, put the latch back down. Keyboard connector. All right, put that in, make sure it's in all the way. Put the latch back down get this tape and stick it back on top okay just like that then you get the base of the keyboard in first okay and then just like before you want to bend the middle part upwards as you kind of push the side clips in okay just like this and then you can clip the whole thing in place all right now we'll close it back up this thing got really dusty from blowing out the dust inside. So we're just gonna clean it off. Okay. All right, now we'll close this up, flip it over. Let's see if I need to clean dust off of these components. I'm just gonna clean all these components off a little bit just cause they're a little bit dusty. Okay. All right, hard drive, slide it over to the left drop it down and then slide it back over to the right. All right, this is really dusty too, so I'm gonna clean that up. All right, so we did have these screws underneath. Let's put these screws back in. We do have to use the PH0 or JIS0 screwdriver now. The PH1 was only for those two hinge screws. Let's get this screw in here. screw in all right once you get that one hard drive screw in you can put this cover back on you kind of want to put the this tape down or the tab down so fold that down when you put this cover on slide it up all right, and then we'll go ahead and put back the rest of these screws Go ahead and remove, put the rest of these screws as well. There, there, another screw up here. Short screw to hold the hard drive. All right, these two screws here. All right, CD drive. I'm gonna clean off the dust from this as well. All right, get the CD drive in, just push it in. Short screw holds in the CD drive. Got the longer screw here. 
Let's see, am I missing something? Okay. I'm going to clean the dust off of here. Oops. Right, just like that. Longer screw here. And then other three long screws here. One in this corner up here. One towards the center here. Another one towards the center here. Alright, I think this one, the plastic is broken, so I don't want to tighten it too far. I think it might be. Hopefully I didn't damage the keyboard putting that screw in too far. Yeah, see it pushed through the screw because, or pushed through the keyboard because the keyboard thing is actually broken here. So the screw is no longer holding into the keyboard properly. Right, last two screws that I got, one up here. You usually would have a screw here as well, but they don't have that. And it looks like the screw mount is actually broken. Okay, so we got that, and we'll put back the battery. So, battery goes back in, back side first. All right, you wanna line up the little notch here with the little circle sticking out there. Just like that, and then swing it down and lock that in place. All right, and that's pretty much all there is to it. So hopefully this video helped you guys. If it did, please like and subscribe. Help others, excuse me, find my videos. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one. All right.